the site muted, get the Twitter sent out, get our bot in here, and we should be good. <clears throat> oh, and I should probably walk on screen. So, hello everyone, this is Chris Ingerson, and it is January 20th, and this is the January 20th TechQuest dev stream. Uh, so today we are going to be doing a couple of things. Uh, we are going to primarily be focusing on the input view and making some adjustments there. Uh, there, one of the things that, or one of the series of notes that I've kind of gotten uh, over the past couple of months uh, at events that I've shown off TextQuest at is a couple of suggestions on changing the input view. Um, one of the most interesting ones for me personally was suggested. Um, it was suggested that basically instead of showing a completely, uh, you know, like semi trans well, here, let me just go ahead and just play. That'll probably be the easiest thing to do. Um, so uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, sort of changes that was proposed was um, instead of having the current um, setup where it's just like a semi transparent black. Uh, oops, that was interesting. Um, let's go ahead and just. through all that. Uh, so instead of having a semi-transparent uh, black overlay uh, all, all the time, what would essentially happen is uh, you would have your input view at the bottom and then we would have, um, I think the, well, so I guess I should break it down into what the original suggestion actually was instead of what my interpretation of it or my picking it apart for bits and pieces I can actually use. Um, the original proposal was essentially, um, so instead of this, uh, we would get rid of this semi-transparent black overlay, hiccups, um, the semi-transparent black overlay at the top so that it would be easier easier to see. Um, and the original suggestion actually went as far as to say like making this a sub-menu. So more, think more like a chat overlay in something like uh, World of Warcraft. Um, at least that was the impression I got from that recommendation. Now, I don't want to do that because I think that's a little too far. I think that takes away from the legibility of it. Um, but I do think that I can actually make some adjustments to make it a little bit easier to see what you're interacting with up here. Um, so currently, whenever you whenever you go up to interact with something, like I'm just going to come up to here. I'm just going to say, like, examine, um, you know, then eat, punch, what have you. Um, you can see that we're basically moving from the top down and um, after we reach the maximum size, it starts to scroll, which is all fine. Um, and we're going to keep sort of similar elements to this, uh, but we're going to make some small changes. So I think the what I'm going to do is, uh, and it's also an attempt to make this menu a little bit more juicy, uh, but instead of having it just instantly pop up like this, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to interact like this, uh, and instead of having this uh, completely solid... Uh, black background, what we'll do is we will have the input view scroll up from the bottom. Um, so it's going to actually lerp in from the bottom off screen. And the uh, output text, instead of being all the way at the very top, is actually going to be down here. Uh, now there are some actual nice usability gains from that. One, uh, when, when, you start, when you start typing, you won't have to, so if I say like eat, I have to move my eyes all the way from here all the way up to here. Um, and now that's only a small thing uh, because it only happens until you basically fill up enough space to uh, get to the bottom. And then after that, every other one that you uh, that you type in is right there. Um, but doing it uh, from the bottom up instead of the top down means that we will immediately get that benefit. We don't have to constantly move our eyes from top to bottom like this. Um, instead, we can just move our eyes from the input field to right above the input field. Um, this does mean that we'll probably want a little bit more of a buffer space here, uh, but that might not be too much of an issue. Um, so we'll move, or we'll start putting in text from the bottom, and then it will kind of move up gradually. Uh, and in addition, I so I still need the the semi-transparent black overlay to make the text legible, but instead of having it always be there, even even if there's nothing here, what we would do is we would simply have a small gradient that goes from you know, semi-transparent black to nothing, um, to completely transparent. And then as we add text, it will kind of push that gradient up until eventually it goes off screen completely and we don't have to worry about it again um, until we clear, and then at which point it'll come back down. But 
I think doing it that way will make our menus a little feel a little bit more juicy. You know, you won't get this kind of like snapping and popping in that we currently get, um, which isn't a, pro a big problem, but it's a it's something that I think we can do a little bit better. Um, and it will just help us update it, update the interface just a little bit to make it a little bit more legible. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and open up UI. And while we're doing this, I am also going to um, add some support for typing sound effects. And I will let you know what that is once we get to that in a second. Let's close all this fun stuff. Close this. All right. Uh, so we're going to need. couple of things. One, I do need to go to the audio section here. F mod, which is, of course, why do I put this in these stupid places? Okay, uh, so we're going to go ahead. That's the wrong thing. F mod, here we go. And I'm going to come up to here. I'm going to add a new effect. And this is going to be under UI. We're going to say submit text success. Let's add sound. UI, submit text failure, I'm going to add sound. Oh, right, I completely forgot. I need to change that. Um, <laughs> Alright, so we're going to call this um, submit text. And this is going to be submit text failure. And I might actually, real quick, just so that I can kind of do this when I edit the script, just so that I can fix that problem where the name is filled in all, already, um, when I don't want that to be the case. I'm going to really quick adjust that so that we set our name to be nothing whenever we create a new sound. It should prevent confusion in uh, subsequent sound adding. Or adding. Let's go ahead and adjust that. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'm going to actually need to go to well, while that's happening, I'm going to take a drink. Ah. All right. So we need to go to here. And then, let's see. Draw inspector GUI, draw from inspector. Uh, there should be, I think this is what I want. Um, draw sound inspector. Here we are. Draw add sound section. And add sound. Go to definition. New sound. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So I can go ahead and do this. New sound dot find property relative dot string value is equal to nothing. And I believe that is just going to be called name. Yep. Cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and let that compile. So now, if I try adding a sound, it sh a new sound, it should instead of having the name of the last um, sound in the list, it should have its own uh, empty name, basically. So that's just a minor workflow thing that'll uh, help me out later. Ooh. Oh, it's sorted. I was going to say, what happened there? Um, so let's go ahead and just real quick add a new sound to test that out. And when we uh, add it, it shouldn't say toggle on. It should say something like the event path, basically. Um, yep. Well, if it feels like it, I guess, considering that it won't let me do it. There we go. Max UI. I think I already have all of these on here. I'll just add another button click one. Sound. And there we go. So you can see that this one is now, uh, it doesn't have a name by default anymore. Oh, that's correct. Cool. Cool. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, let's go ahead and close these. Let's go to submit text. Uh, these all look pretty good. So let's go ahead and we are going to say, uh, we want our input view. Let's come back over to here. Right. And 
to give us a better sense of this, I am going to change. Actually, eh. yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this camera, turn this base one off, make this a temp camera. And we're going to make this blue or red in the background. Eh, probably blue because that's nicer to work with. Um, so all this is really going to do is uh, just let us see the gradient that I was talking about. If I had a pure black background, you wouldn't really be able to see that very well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and I am going to grab our output. And actually how I'm going to handle this is I'm going to just going to do uh, that's not what I wanted to click. Uh, double click over here. So this is going to be the old output and I'm going to call this one output new. Uh, let's go ahead and come over to here. Up zero and a bottom one hundred. All right, and here is where things are going to get a little more iffy. I say iffy as if it's a bad thing. Um, a little more challenging. All right. So currently, what we have here is we have our. Um, Oh, you know what? I bet this is on the root. It is. Cool. So we need to... Yep. Cool. Uh, so we have to do a couple of things. One, we need to move, uh, get rid of this image on the root, and we need to move that into... Copy this, our input area. So I'm going to go ahead and just paste component as new here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and disable it here. So you can still see that that is semi-transparent. Uh, we need that. Otherwise, we will have difficulty being able to read the text. Um, and now, on the input new, or I'm sorry, output new, we have our scroll area, that's all fine. We have our output label, which is... I don't think I'm actually using, so that's interesting. I didn't realize that was still there, that's kind of funny. Um, we have our active section area. Okay. So... What we're going to do is we need to go to our scroll area. I guess that's really where it is, which is a little gross, but I guess that kind of works. All right, uh, so we're going to just reset these positions a little bit. Okay, uh, we are going to change our child alignment to be bottom left, I believe. And we are also going to do this. So I'm going to create a new image. Now you'll notice that it's parented. And that makes sense because uh, we haven't changed things yet. Um, well, not parented. Parented is obvious. It's uh, set to be pivoted at the top left, and that's actually going to change. Uh, the quickest thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and add a layout element that we are going to call that. We're going to say more layout. Uh, we are going to make it stretch all the way. Uh, we are going to give it the gradient. We're going to give it a vertical gradient. It will be from black to nothing. So you can see that we have this line here. Oh, that is a bother, isn't it? I suppose that kind of makes sense. We're going to change this. Yeah, we're going to totally change how this is set up, actually. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is going to be changed. I'm going to call this, well, we'll keep it. So this is going to be 0 and 0. So now it's going to be flush with the side. And we're actually going to add... Yeah, there are a couple of things that we need to do. Um, we need this to be anchored to the bottom have a pivot of 0y. So now you can see that we have that black uh, transparency going on there, uh, which does remind me, actually, I do need to come back over to here. I need to co copy this color. The 200 is what it looks like our alpha is. We need that to match up. Okay, uh, and we are going to go ahead and set this. How big do I want you? You have a height of 15. If I turn you off, do you have a height of zero? No. That's interesting. Okay. Hmm. 
So it just has, oh, that's probably because of my padding, isn't it? Yeah, OK. Uh, so the image here, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And we're going to just stretch it across the bottom. OK. Uh, and we need that so that I can give it an arbitrary height of like 50, did I give this a slice? Is this sliced? This is sliced. Um, I don't want this to be sliced. I want it to be simple. Uh, okay. So with that, we can give it a little, we can probably actually make it bigger. Let's go 100. So that gives us a little bit of a gradient. Um, so now when we interact with objects, you'll be able to clearly see everything. Um, and you'll just have a little bit of a fade to get to the input. Uh, and let's go ahead and call that gradient. Uh, that is pretty much just always going to be at the top here. Don't have to worry about that. Um, now we are going to change this. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new object. And this is where things are going to get a little interesting. Constrained on the horizontal versus just preferred size. Okay. Pretty much the same thing has to happen here. We're going to go ahead and add a couple of layout components. First one is going to be a vertical layout group. And the second one is going to be a content size fitter with a vertical fit of preferred size. We're going to allow this to stretch. We're going to give this. Um, I don't think we need any padding on this. So we're going to add, actually, we're pretty much just going to copy this. Let's go ahead and put this down here. Make this component is new. Oh, sorry, wrong thing. Get component values. There we go. Uh, then we are going to go ahead and come up to here. I'm going to turn this padding off. And that should be all I need from that. So in theory, with all of this, um, we should have pretty much the exact same setup, except I'm going to call this content. And let's see here, child force expand. Uh, what's my height? Okay, so this is not looking super great. I'm pretty sure what I want from this is to stretch all the way across, which I can't do because it's going to control it. Cool. Um, hmm. Well, I guess the quickest thing for me to do is to just kind of pull this in. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a sort of input grid. Uh, it's going to be content. And let me go ahead and grab some prefab. I'm just going to grab a basic text section. Let's put that under here. And let's just add some test to our label. Oh, yes, and content itself is going to be an image, by the way. And it is going to be the same image as this. So let's go ahead and copy this component. Oh, wait, what? You should be sliced. And that was annoying. Uh, let's go ahead and come back here. And paste component values. OK. Oh, right. Hold on. Uh, the gradient. Doesn't, we don't want it to stretch like this. We actually want it to stretch from the top. There we are. So now you can see that it's kind of like it's kind of seamless. Okay. So with that, uh, we should have padding. Uh, let's go ahead and say padding left five, padding right five. We might actually go ahead. And, uh, we'll do five, five and five. Seems good. Um, all right, so I'm just going to go ahead and like duplicate a couple of these. Kind of try to make them seem about right. So you can see that as we fill up, the gradient uh, moves up until eventually it will go off screen. And we should be good. So let's go ahead and delete this. Okay. 
now. Clear all of this fun stuff. Now, oops, sorry. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I think we're pretty good. So I'm going to come down to here. We don't really need this. I think we want this to be our viewport, this to be our content. What happened there? All right, hold on. I'm going to go ahead and create a scroll view. Let's see. Content, viewport. Yeah, I was right. Okay. So we want this to be down here. Is our content just like forked? That's interesting. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and move some of this stuff around so it's a little order that I'm accustomed to. Uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this. And now I can figure out why you are like this. Why are you moved up to there? Um, <laughs> it has to be being moved by the scroll wrecked um, because this is all kinds of wrong. Hmm. Well, how about... Hmm. Well, I suppose we could get around it and make this our scroll area again, and then we can not really worry about this too much, but sure, whatever. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and come up to here. Uh, we have our content, we have our active section area, that's all fine. Uh, output is going to be output new. Suggestions is somewhere else, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, let's see, auto suggestion command. Oh, that's pretty funny. That shouldn't actually even be used. Um, let's go ahead and come down to here. Do, 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 do. Max suggestion count. Find all references that you used. Cool, you're not. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of you. And I think that's. Go ahead and let's see, placeholder cycle ID. Okay, what are you going to do? Oh, right, 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 right. That that makes sense. I forgot that's what that was. Um, I should probably add some tooltips to these. Uh, data to check and see if alternate placeholder text should work. Show. This is so. Uh, let's see. So here's where things get a little... Well, no, that's fine. Let's go ahead and let that compile. I will set this back to 0.5. Although it might not be used, actually. Okay, there we go. Okay, now let's go ahead and... All oh, right, it's compiling, which means that we have an arbitrary five minutes. Whenever you feel like it, Unity. All right, so with all of this in place, um, it should be a little bit easier for us to add new text. Um, and it should be somewhat more the correct term. Um, I don't want to say juicy quite yet because it's not quite doing everything that I want, but it's it's a little bit more uh, uh, ease in, ease out type situation instead of pop in. So uh, let's go ahead and I think I'm just going to apply changes and let this just kind of function real quick so I can see what it does. So we're going to go ahead and close 
this, hit apply. And before I do anything else, I am also going to go ahead and come up to text quest view. We're going to go to definition. Um, I am going to look at my audio. That's a bunch of stuff that I don't need open. Okay, audio, here we are. Um, I'm going to totally cheat, because I just kind of want to steal these. So, submit text, I'm going to copy that ID. So, TextQuest View is the base class for all of my um, menus in-game that have text input at the bottom. Um, so, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, tooltip, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to go ahead and I guess I should serialize this. Serialize field, protected, int, uh, submit text sound is equal to this. And I'm just cheating by making it this default value, because um, that means it should automatically detect it without me having to add anything. So I'm going to go ahead and say the sound to play when text is submitted. Let's go ahead and let that compile, but before I do that, I suppose I should also go ahead and let's go to on submit, and it's of course not, it's abstract, which makes sense. Um, well, I could change this to be virtual. Uh, well, mm, nah, nah, that kind of sucks, but nah. Um, it essentially means that I need to go to all of my subsequent views and manually type that code in, <sighs> instead of making it a virtual function. The reason that I like that is because I want some menus to play failure sounds if you play, like a failure sound if you put the wrong sound in, or you put the wrong text in. Um, think like, if you put text in a menu, like the main menu, that doesn't correspond to any option, um, and it doesn't give you an Easter egg, then it should probably play like a little fail sound effect, um, just to let you know that nothing happened. Um, so I can't really do that, which kind of sucks. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. We're going to go back. I can just go back to normal view, probably. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say serialize field, tooltip, do, 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 do. Protected int submit text fail sound is equal to this. Sound to play when text is submitted but has but is it invalid, I guess. Okay, um, and that means that all of my subsequent ones are going to kind of have to follow that. Ah, geez. Fortunately, I don't have too many. Um, so let's go ahead. Input view is the only one that we're working on right now, so we'll come back to here. We'll test it out on this menu. So on submit, what I want is... Essentially, right here, I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, fmod sound manager dot play fmod uh, text or submit text sound. Okay, pretty straightforward. That's really all I got to do. So we'll let those both combine or compile. And while that is happening, I can go ahead and turn this off, turn this off, turn you on, hit save. So with the current level of our uh, of our setup, what should happen is the text should come in from the bottom, and it should scroll 
Now, here is where things are going to get a little more iffy. Um, the uh, so the um, text that that shows up essentially. Well, no, no, it, sh it should be able to to scale just fine. Um, we'll see. I'm probably gonna have to change how that works actually a little bit. It's just gonna be weird. Um, all right. At the very least, we should have a gradient at the bottom, um, so it's a little bit of a change. Everything else, actually, now that I think about it, might not quite work the way that I expect it to, so we'll see. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do start. Uh, let's go ahead and do continue. We're going to have to wait for it to finish loading, and then it will plop us in uh, to the castle. All right, so if I do enter, nice, you can see that we have, you can see that we have our bottom here. We do have a bit of a gradient. We can clearly see everything that's up here. And if we start adding stuff, I'm not crazy about that sound. For now, I have placeholder sound effects for the uh, input text. Um, mostly because sadly, the sound library I'm using does not have any keyboard sound effects, which was kind of surprising actually. They have tons of clicks and such, but nothing really particularly useful for entering keyboards. So I'm probably going to have to get a microphone and record my own sound effects for some things, um, which is fun. Uh, okay, so you can see that we are popping up from the bottom. Uh, they are popping in instantly right now, uh, and that is not ideal. Um, I think that is because right now all of my settings by default probably have um, a setting value for how fast it should scroll. So if I go to Final References here, you can see that we have settings to auto scroll duration, which I do not think I ever really use. <laughs> so probably this, sh like, I don't think it ever really gets a sign. Yeah, like everything is almost always 0F here, which is uh, not great. Um, I think I'm going to actually remove that. Uh, and we're going to go back here to input view. So instead of doing this, I'm just going to go ahead and say auto scroll duration. And I did stop playing there. I did not get that. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this auto scroll duration. Let's do this. Okay. Um, that is pretty much all I needed, final references. Uh, so we're just going to kind of do that for everything. Okay. And I think we're good. So let's go ahead and let that compile. Um, so... Now with our auto scroll duration, it should be it should basically take 0.5 seconds for all of the um, all of the new text to be visible. So it should essentially like slide in from the bottom, um, kind of. But I think, if I'm correct, what's going to happen right now is that will not actually be the case, and that is because of how. Um, my pivot is set up, so I'm actually going to need to change that. Once the game compiles, of course, because you can't rush a game to change. It's very delicate. You understand. All right, so we're going to go back here to input. Uh, I am going to go to... Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's why. <laughs> uh, something that I totally forgot to do is I... Well... I forgot to make this a uh, fmod sound ID. Okay, we're going to let that compile. Uh, and then I am going to go down here to content. Uh, and I actually need to change this so that it is pivoting from 
I believe the top, actually. Um, so I want this to be like that. At least I think that's what I want. Um, so if it's pivoting from the top, what that should do is it means that it will grow from the top down instead of from the bottom up. And that sounds counterintuitive, but the reason we want it to be like that is because when we scroll our scroll area, um, the bottom of the scroll area is the bottom of this rec transform. So by having it uh, grow from the top down, that means that when we add new content, that content is off screen. So then when we tell the scroll area to scroll, it should go from being off screen at the bottom to suddenly being at, uh, well, still at the bottom of the screen, but no longer off screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit apply here. That should basically fix all that. We're gonna go ahead and hit save. And let's try this again. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and just go to continue. give it its sweet time so that it can load the levels. It is actually a little distressing that it's taking so long to load those levels since it's not really something that's particularly crazy, but. Okay, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and come up to here. I'm gonna say test, or teat apparently, test. Okay, so it's still scrolling in instantly. Uh, let's go ahead and hit pause here. Y, view container, input, root, input, new scroll area, content. Um, <laughs> so let's go to here, let's go to scroll delay, go to definition. Is this even, okay, there we go. Okay, interesting. Um, let's try expanding this. So instead of 0.5, I'm gonna make this like three seconds, something very obvious. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not doing anything right now. It is not. Um, so that means that this is basically auto updating the wrong way not what I want. That makes me sad. Uh, okay. Let's try set this pivot to be zero, just out of curiosity. Oh, I wonder. Let's try this. I'm going to go ahead and turn off maximize on play, turn this off. I'm going to adjust some variables just to try and get a feeling for this. Um, so I can't scroll, which makes sense because I'm not, you know, actually in a scroll area yet. Well, I mean, oh, this is a scroll area, but I mean, I don't need to scroll yet. Um, I do kind of want to give myself 10 padding, though. Uh, I really wish I could because I don't like having... Okay, um, so interesting. I am going to say that this is not doing what I want. And I think, let's find all references here. No, I do have my frame yield there, so. Um, whenever you adjust the size of a scroll area or a scroll rect, it needs a frame to buffer, basically, before it realizes that it's changed, so I need to have that yield turn there. Hmm, okay. Then let's go ahead and come back to here. And what else do I want to change? Um, 
So it's it should pivot from the top. I'm I'm pretty reasonably confident that that's what I want. But the problem is that its height seems to not be correct. So we're gonna go ahead and do a couple of things. One, I'm gonna just select this. Now I'm gonna go to our content here, and I'm gonna give myself ten ten. Okay. Now I'm also gonna come down to here. And I'm going to debug T here, debug.log T. I want to see if it's happening um, live, essentially. So we're going to come back down to here. Uh, we're going to just bump this up to 3 by default. OK. Uh, so I should get a readout of this value changing, except I probably want this to actually be um, Mm-hmm. String dot format. And we're gonna make this just be zero, one, two, and this is gonna be based off of uh, duration T and cached position, I think. Well no, cached position is should go before T. Because that's not going to change. Alright. So I'll let that compile. So that should give me detailed readouts on the duration that it's trying to lerp uh, at the cached starting point, um, which should never be zero or one. It should always be a weird middle value, um, unless it's the first time that you type in for some reason. Um, and then after that, uh, we should get an update on T, which should take roughly three seconds. Now, if that's the case, if it does actually take that three seconds, um, then something else is happening that is forcing the uh, content to size in a way that I'm not expecting, apparently. So let's go ahead and play. <sighs> I am tired. Don't know why, but I am. All right, so we get this. So you can see that it is taking three seconds for it to scroll, but the fact that it's doing that means that it's not, not behaving correctly. Um, Is it scrolling to one, not to zero? No, that's that's T. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Point two, two point five. That's impossible. Like, literally, it's impossible for it to be two point five. Normalized position is zero to one. Okay, this is interesting. Eight. Point five. That seems more correct. Okay. Uh, punch. Seems to be at 0.5 again? That seems highly unlikely. Okay. Well, let's try this. Um, one. How curious. Oh, and this is, by the way, what it looks like when it's at full uh, screen. So even though I can't scroll, I'll go ahead and add one more. Um, so once, ooh, 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 well, look at that. Um, that's not good. That's not good at all. I can't scroll. Problemo. Okay. So all kinds of problems are happening here. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on our UI again. Let's go to our root here. We're going to go to our scroll area. Um, I think that is because, now that I think about it, I need to have an image on this. So if I go ahead and create a new uh, scroll area. The viewport, I believe, has all of this information on it. So let's go ahead and copy um, this component. We're going to come over here, collapse all this fun stuff. We're going to paste component as new. We're going to add a mask. Pretty 
pretty sure that I want that to be a regular mask. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we're going to come back over here to Scroll Area. We're going to say Show Mask Graphic. We're going to turn this off real quick. Scroll Area. We're going to turn off Show Mask Graphic. Oh, they're doing that or something. But, um, okay. So let's go ahead and drag these. Yes, yes, I know. Okay, so now that should make that possible to scroll, regardless of size. But you are our problem. <clears throat> How do I want to handle this? I think this is good. Let's go ahead and delete you, turn you off, hit apply. And there are a couple of other things that I can mess with just to kind of test things. Also, I'm just going to go ahead and jump over to the castle level directly, just because there's no real reason for me to uh, constantly have to load through everything. I can just go ahead and play. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Well. That's not correct, now is it? What happened here? Where is my gradient? And why is it gone? Oh, shoot. Because of the mask. Ah. Well, that actually might... Um, hmm. Hmm. That complicates things. Right. Um, frack. So. Frack. Okay. Um, uh, mm, hmm. That complicates things. Um, So yeah, if I turn off mask, suddenly that should be fine. Although... It doesn't seem that way. What's up with this off-color tinting? Oh, I bet it's because of that. Yeah, okay. Hmm, so that causes problems, but that's, that's fine. We're going to check something else out here. Okay, uh, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go ahead and say that. We're going to try test again. Nope. Okay, so you're not helpful. Um, <laughs> Pivot. Perhaps. Perhaps it's because of the anchor? No? Those would be one. That's what I want. I want it to be from the top. This is curious. I... It must be this, then? Um, so maybe I want this to be at 0.5? Let's try, I guess. Ah. Hold on. Let's set this at zero again. I'm just going to do a couple of things. Nope, still can't scroll. So that is distressing. Nope, still can't scroll. It's a raycast target. So that can go in here. Raycast target. Yep, okay. Should be scrolling. 
theory. Um, we do have a height. Hmm. But you know what? It might just be faster for me to build this from scratch <laughs> instead of trying to edit an existing one, honestly. Um, hmm. This is rather distressing, though. I don't like that it's not... that I can't scroll, because that's super awkward. Um, let's see. We're using the output new. We're using an arbitrary output label, which is fine, because we shouldn't actually be doing anything with it. Placeholder, we have our input. That's all fine. Um, so we have text, blah, 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 output, content. All of this should function, as I would expect. But it doesn't, which is most odd. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and stop playing. And now I have to go back to Splash Fade, which is kind of why I was in there to begin with, but eh, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this on. We're going to go back to our input view. Let's open this up. I will go ahead and remove these two things while I'm in here. Uh, let's go to our output new. I am going to do a couple of things. One, scroll area. This is not really going to work, is it? Yeah, we got to fix this. I really wish I could do like an ignore mask <laughs> type thing. Um, unfortunately, I cannot. So... Let's let's change this a little bit. Um, so here's our scroll area. I'm going to try to kind of mimic what I was doing before. Um, so we're going to have a scroll area f that is... Ah, no, that has to be a little different. Um, Zero, that's all fine. With, I guess it's just going to be the. Oh, that's why I have that. That makes that completely irrelevant then. So I don't need the mask at all on this, which is nice because um, I'm using that on the actual scroll rect itself. Um, But, 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 this is where it gets from. Um, my scroll area is not going to be set to expand height. I'm going to make the scroll area be the, uh, not be the viewport, because maybe that was part of my problem. So we're just going to say none. Um, and in that case, I am going to go ahead and... I guess we can try it with that. Maybe that was throwing everything off. Um, so we'll put content back on. Let's go ahead and turn off our root. Let's hit apply. Turn this off. Save. Let's go back to the castle and then we'll try playing again. Hmm. I think. I think the reason that we're seeing the um, the text show up right away is just because I think our content is growing from the bottom up, not from the top down, which is infuriating, but it's entirely possible. Test, 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 test. Okay, still can't scroll. Um, oh, wait, no, I can. I was going... Okay, weird. So that does detect it. It does clip as we would expect. Um, that's nice. We can click and drag if we so choose. Cool. So that's all back to normal now. That's good. Um, now as for everything else, let's go ahead and experiment. So we're going to go down here to view container. We're going to go to input, root, output, new, scroll area, content. Here's where things get interesting. And this is where it's going to also be fun. Um, so I'm going to say hello, and then I have to do... I think I got that. 
holy crap, if I did, I'm amazing on my first try. Um, I hit enter and I pressed pause at the same time. Um, if it detected my enter press, I'm going to be super ecstatic. So we're going to take a look at this. See it's height is 702. Darn. It didn't do it. Okay. Okay, so it instantly changed. Um, also, damn, I was so close to looking at it. Uh, I can't. Is it upside down? I have to press it. Whatever. Um, so, it is instantly expanding its height, which is fine. The only problem is that it is also instantly moving up, which is why I think it is growing from the top, or from the bottom up. So if I hit zero there, I'll let that go. Okay. Um, let's try here again. And again, like if I make this anything other than zero, it becomes impossible for me to properly handle it. So if I do like 0.5, well, no, nope, that's correct. Cool, so I want this to be one then. All right, so let's try this. There we go. So, super weird. But whatever, it seems to work. Cool. So I just need to change my scroll area pivot to be point or to be one. Here. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Very sorry for sneezing into whoever's ear is listening. Oof. All right. So let's try that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Hit play. Okay, try hitting play again. Apparently, I didn't want to play that time. Ah. So we'll go ahead and just enter some random arbitrary text. Oh, God. Ah. Oh, maybe that's because. Isn't it? Uh, that sucks really hard. Um, so if I do test, and then I set you to one. Ah, oh, what else? No. Changed. This is odd. Um, like, let's try this. Okay, so that's correct. Okay, let's just try test, like flooding it with testing. Oh, what was up with that? It wouldn't detect my clicking to drag it, and it wouldn't let me scroll for a bit there. That's interesting. Okay, now I'm going to set this back to one. Okay, so that part is correct in the sense that it grows, as we would expect. 
But the problem is that our scroll area is forked. So yeah, I, I'm just going to build it from scratch. Um, because I'm pretty sure that's just going to be better for everyone involved. So let's go ahead and go back to Splash Fade. I'm just going to go ahead and start by doing UI. Uh, we'll make a scroll view. I'm going to call this output new new. I'm going to rename this to output new old. Um, okay, so we're going to come back over to here. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things. Uh, first up, we're going to go ahead and just delete both of these things. Um, we are going to set this to be clamped. We are going to not have inertia. We will have, I believe it was a scroll sensitivity of 15 or 10. Um, 25, I was way off. 25. Okay, uh, we don't have horizontal scrolling. We do have vertical scrolling, though. And we do want that. Okay. All right, so from here, uh, we can just go ahead and get rid of this, because I'm pretty sure we don't need it. Um, we do want this to be a mask, though. So let's go ahead and I'm going to drag this down to here. I'm going to add, actually, I'm going to change the background to the UI mask, which is basically a nothing sprite. Um, we're going to add a mask. We're going to make it not show the graphic. Uh, we will move up to here so it's closer to the image. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this component. We're going to paste this component values in. We do have our pivot set to zero, which makes sense because we want our scroll bar to start there. Okay, viewport and content and viewport is all pretty much everywhere, so we'll go ahead and let that go. And content now is where things get fun, so we're going to go ahead and layout group, vertical layout, I'm going to have another layout that's going to be content size fitter, vertical fit is going to be preferred size, dot dot dot, let's go ahead and do padding of 10 and 10, and that is pretty much all we care about, uh, let's see, we have this, this, um, I think we'll be fine here, pivot of zero, I I think we want to be point zero. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and pretty much just copy this. I'm going to go ahead and paste this under content. Um, I'm going to say position of zero. I'm going to turn on my temp camera so I can see the gradient. Let's get rid of the old output. You are all kinds of wrong. Ah, here we are. That would be why. Uh, position of zero. That's not what I want. I actually want this to be here with a pivot of one. Position of zero. You are getting set because, of course, you are. How wonderful are we? Um, so, scroll bar is going to fight with me, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I hate it when it does this. Um, so I don't get much choice there. Because gradient has to be at the top. Um... But this is being forced to the top. Wonderful. Cool. Uh, let's add some text just to kind of see it in action. Oh, well, well, well. Isn't, oh, it's because it doesn't have Hold on. OK. We are not looking great so far. Um, content does need to have its image and all that, I suppose. Um, so let's go ahead and come down to here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, copy component, paste that under 
content based on other than new. Okay, we're looking pretty good so far. Um, that is distressing, which probably means that I need this viewport to not be a mask and not have an image. And that is probably for the best. And this should not be a UI mask, but should rather be the sliced. Yeah, that way it fills up the entire thing. OK. So now the question is, how do we get this to start from the bottom? Not that. OK. Content, or perhaps output. Hmm. Hmm. It would be nice. Not that. Um. Hmm. Okay. This is the problem, though. Why are you being forced into that position? Maybe I should. I don't know. I was gonna say maybe I need to add a sub content or content thing, but um, that doesn't make sense. So you're no fun. Uh, let's go to lower left. Okay, that's not happening. You're making this difficult for me, Unity. You're making it needlessly difficult. Quite infuriating to be precise. So, <laughs> hmm. let me think. What can I do to get this to behave the way that I want? Uh, our problem is that it's not positioning properly at the bottom. It seems like scroll wrecks are pretty hardwired to only really enjoy doing stuff at the top. <laughs> um, but that doesn't make sense. Content, I should be able to have this populate from the bottom up, not from the top down. Like It shouldn't be enforced like that. There should be a way to, to handle this. Um, and I'm saying that because I know that I've done that before. So why are these not doing what I'm expecting? Um, let's go ahead and we're going to duplicate this. OK. Going to be padding on this. Five and ten from the bottom. So I do want five, ten. Okay. Um, no, sorry, five from the top. So we can grow, and you can see that it will properly resize. But the problem is that it's populating from the wrong end, essentially. Um, this is interesting. So if I set you to zero, there we go. Jeez. OK, uh, now let's duplicate this a couple of times. Cool. Uh, let's get rid of all of those. All right, so that is looking much better now. Um, let's go ahead and set this up as the proper viewports. Let's see if that actually ends up behaving the way I would expect. Um, so I guess for this viewport, I can kind of just get rid of all of this. We'll, we'll keep these on there for now, just disabled, because um, I might end up needing them. So all this is correct. Uh, we'll go back up to here. Now we have our output new, and then we want our content to be our input grid. Now let's go ahead and turn this off, hit apply. And I'm also going to go ahead and shorten this back to, let's make it one. Let's hit apply again. Um, let's save. All right. Uh, let's jump right into the castle and try this out. So it should, in theory, um, now populate the text that's input from the bottom up instead of from the top down. And it should also scroll them in a way that is pretty nice to look at. Downside, 
now that I think about it, uh, is that I actually have set it up incorrectly again, out of force of habit. So now if I type test, it's just going to pop in. Yeah. Um, so we need to go back to here. Let's go to input. I'm sorry, not input, output view. Um, I think this has to be one. Please don't jump all the way up. Okay, so let's try this again. Pip. Nope. Crud. You can't tell me that it's this again, right? Like, surely not. Let's uh, let's go ahead and say uh, test again, and then examine. Okay, so I can click and drag. Um, let's go ahead and go back to viewport. Let's set this up to be zero. Let's type test again. Okay, so it's instantly happening now. It is populating from the bottom, but the problem is that it's also instantly sizing from the bottom, which means that its pivot is not correct. So I need this pivot, I think, to be 1. Yes, I think that's correct. And then now it should do it. So hit. Yep, that's that. Uh, but the problem is that if there's nothing there, it won't work. Yeah, because if there's nothing there, it's up at the top. Ugh, gross. OK, um, so that complicates things. <sighs> Okay, um, oh my god, is it, am I going to have to do that? I might, oh man, that sucks so hard. Cool, so for this to work, my viewport has to be... Z well, my viewport, I think, is irrelevant, actually. I think it can be, honestly, anything. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Um, the content has to be set to zero for the scroll rec to position it there, which means that I think everything else has to be below it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this real quick. I'm just going gonna, gonna to clear this. I'm going to duplicate this and paste it below. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this gray have this, you know, be properly sized and all that stuff. Um, and we're going to change this to be a content size fitter with no padding. So zero, 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 zero. Okay, that's fine. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn off this image. We're going to come down to here. Now everything should work. I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to change my content to be that content, and let's see if this works. Test. Okay, I can still scroll. Okay. Oh, I forced that. Hold on. Clear. No. Come on. Are they mutually exclusive? So... Hmm. Oh, also this child alignment, now that I think about it, is kind of irrelevant, um, but... Okay. We do get that. Um, so can I make this one? Okay. No, I can't. Ah, you suck, scroll Rex. Cool, cool, cool. So I'm probably going to have to write my own frickin' scroll rect. You've got to be kidding me. <sighs> I'm trying to think of a way around it. Like, a child would have been ideal, but apparently not. Because apparently if I don't have this be one, it won't work. And if I make it one, then it moves everything to the top! 
Ah, uh, you've got to be the most annoying thing I've ever dealt with. Not really. I've actually dealt with far worse, but still, it's quite quite infuriating that that would be the case. So it's it's a mutually exclusive relationship. But that doesn't make sense. Like it, 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 that can't be the case. So this has to be zero. Oh my, oh my goodness, no way. I, I should not need two separate scroll wrecks. That cannot be the solution. Ah, uh, No, that can't, that can't be the solution. Um, so I need, so I have to have a pivot of zero here. But if I have a pivot, a pivot of zero, then it will fail to scroll all the time, forever. Uh, let's go into debug here. Can I force this into a specific position? Let's see, there should be a vector 2, which I'm sure is probably not editable. Ah. <sighs> It's probably actually hidden, because Unity loves to do that. Um, just be giant dicks about it. So, let's set content to 1, and let's just try to find a way to force it to the bottom. Um, and I can't, which is dumb. Very, very dumb. So I'm going to go ahead and create a scroll bar. Uh, let's go ahead and make this be our vertical scroll bar. Permanent. Okay, cool. Can't can't control that. Um, what are my values? Okay, so not scrolling because there's nothing to scroll, I guess. Um, Go ahead and delete that. Go back here. Set you to be none. Okay. Uh, content. Viewport. Nope. Ah, uh, Unity. Why do you suck so hard? Okay. So. <sighs> Honestly, the worst part about this is because <laughs> that. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold everything. Ah, right. Um, yeah, the worst part about this is, like, there's no way for me to freaking, like, position this. There's no way for me to, to basically get this to do what I want. Um, unless I make the viewport expand with it? Would that work? That might work. Okay, um, well, let's try that. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. We're just going to paste component as new. I know you're not going to like it yet, but let's go ahead and copy this component. Back up to here, paste component as new. Okay. So if I do a content size fitter, we do get our size set up. Let's go ahead and scale this bottom. Ooh, I'm liking this. I'm liking where this is going. Let's get our position Y up there. That's good. And now, if we set you to one, maybe. Nope. Now it's just not doing anything. <sighs> Poor reasons. Are you serious? What the frig? Ah, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Set you to zero. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, that might be a... Oh, come on! Nope. Cool. 
yeah, so if I do that, it won't, it just straight up won't work. Um, <laughs> oh, that also breaks the viewport, so that's, that's good. Um, so the viewport apparently is sacred and must not be touched. That's interesting. Um, so now I can move this around like that, and then go back to scale like that, and then now I can do it. So yeah, so the viewport can't be stretched. That's cool. Um, okay. Hmm. Well, this is turning out to be quite infuriating, especially because this shouldn't have been that hard. Uh, so if I clear this now, it's going to be up at the top again. Yep. Oh, Unity, you, you are so infuriating to work with sometimes. Okay, um, let me think. So I need a scroll rect that scrolls from the bottom and grows from the top. <laughs> I uh, why on earth would this be so hard? Um, because again, in theory, all I should have to do is just make my pivot one, but then it will expand from the top, which is hilarious because that means that the viewport's pivot is pointless. It is literally like it does nothing. It is worthless. It is a waste of space. It might as well be point five for all that matters. Uh, the content is the only one that matters. So that's terrifying seeing it go back and forth like that. Um, but <sighs> so if I don't have it, if I have its pivot at zero, then it looks right. And if I have its pivot at one, it functions right, but looks wrong. And because it looks wrong, it actually doesn't quite function as it should. Um, <sighs> I don't know how to force it is the problem because its position is wrong. Its parent is just messed up. Can I do that? Will you actually behave if I do that? Oh my god, there it is. Uh, of course it was something stupid. So I just have to set the anchors to zero. So let's try that. Okay, so we're going to go back here to the image, or to the input. We're going to go to input, we need to go to our viewport, and this needs to be zero. Okay, now let's try that again. Uh, let me double check, actually, that this is set up correctly for everything. So we need content. We need a pivot of one. And also the padding set up right here. So let's save that. Let's try this again. And this time it should work. Oh my goodness, I hate trying to figure out how to force Unity UI to do what I want sometimes. It is quite vexing. Quite, quite vexing. But at least we did it. Mm. 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 Not sure about that. Um... So the next thing that we need to do is we need to get our total input slide in from or sliding in from off screen. It's probably going to be uh, like 0 0.5 second, well maybe a 0.2 second, uh, 0.25 second increment like duration for that fade in. It, it needs to be very quick, um, essentially. So we're going to go ahead and let's say test hit examine. Um, yeah, I do think we can fine-tune that a little bit. So one second is obviously way too long. Um, I think the original idea was 0.5. Let's try that. That's actually not too bad. Um, let's shorten that to 0.25 just to be curious. Um, 
I kind of like 0.25 because it's fast enough that it's not really that terrible um, and it's also slow enough that it's noticeable. Um, so I can do things like eat. That's pretty good. And then, and then the only problem is that when you get the paragraphs of information, it gets to be kind of a bit much. I guess actually a real test of this is going to be. Uh, let's go ahead and pause this and maximize on delay. Ooh. Ooh, no. What has happened here? All kinds of things are wrong. Wow. Oh. Oh, it was that. It was that. Okay, hold on. I just need to change this. Ooh. Oh, boy. Um, this is distressing, though. Uh, so we can scroll forever down, which is not good. There should be a limit. Um, ah, jeez. Okay. Uh, so real quick, I'm going to be clear. Uh, and stop clipping as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say... Yep, I can scroll that off screen, which is not okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. I don't know what to do there. Um, if I type read. Also, just out of curiosity, can I bump you to 10, please? Nope. No concessions. Five it is. That sucks. I suppose that's only fair. Okay. Um, cause this, so things like the ASCII art have to really adhere to specific sizes, otherwise it just doesn't work. Um, so that kind of sucks. Um, it's not too bad, honestly. Uh, it just means that the text on the left is a little closer than I would like. Um, but what are you going to do? Okay, uh, so... Known as an invoice from the kingdom. It's all fine. Uh, this is our our other problem now. Um, I need to prevent it from scrolling past where it should. Uh, that is, well, maybe that's not much of an issue actually, because um, that would mean that if you ever are confused about what you need to do, you can kind of or what you're looking at getting too cluttered for you, you can just kind of like scroll all the way up to the top and you'll see a little bit of a gradient. And, eh, it's not too bad. Um, so, hmm. oh, this is dumb though. Yeah, you can totally scroll when there's nothing there, which is unacceptable. Unacceptable. So, shoot. That's probably, I'm guessing, Hold on. Hmm. Let's go ahead and pause, go back to maximizing on play. Not maximizing on play. So I want that scrolling to stop. I don't want it I don't want you to be able to scroll when there's nothing there, because there's no reason for you to be able to scroll. It's just kind of sloppy. I'm assuming that what is happening here is that we do have a minimum height of fifteen. And because of that, we're kind of getting screwed. Um, wow, that is not cool. Um, 
probably what that means is that I need these to be zero until I have content, at which point they may then be five or ten and five. Which I'm sorry, no five and ten. Which sucks. Um that complicates things quite a bit. So I suppose uh, something that I could do would be kind of just cheat and uh, turn off scroll rect so you can't do anything until uh, until there's actually content there. It's not ideal, but it's a th it's a possibility. Um, but we do have other problems. Um, so. I do like I do like the test or I do like the gradient. I think that works pretty well. Um, hmm. All right. Uh, so there are a couple of other things that we need to handle. Um, one is when you clear, it probably shouldn't just blink everything out of existence. It should probably. Um, just go ahead and like rapidly collapse everything. Um, so I would basically do an auto scroll all the way up to the top, um, and then do that probably within about 4.5 seconds. So let's let's do a couple of things real quick. We're gonna go back to the input view. Um, we're gonna have a new enumerator. So we're gonna go ahead and say private i enumerator uh, clear routine. All the way up to here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say public float um, clear duration is equal to, I think it's going to be 0 0.5f. Um, probably it could actually be 1f. Uh, no, nah, we'll do 0 0.5f. 0 0.25. Scroll duration. Okay. Go ahead and say tooltip. Um, how long the output area scrolls when you clear all the text? I'm pretty sure that, yeah, we have a clear function that gets called. Um, yep. So all we're going to do here is just say start a routine. Clear coroutine, and then we're going to just move these to be at the bottom of that coroutine. So we're going to go ahead and say float t is equal to zero f while t is less than one f say t plus equals time dot delta time divided by clear duration uh, then we're going to go ahead and say clear return null and in that time we're going to go ahead and say float cached start is equal to pretty much whatever this is so scroll area dot vertical normalized position okay and then we're just going to move this. We're going to move this over to here. And let's see. So we're going to go ahead and say from cached position, which I guess I can just go ahead and change that. Instead of one to 0, it's going to be to 1f. And then we're going to just at the very end here set it to be equal to 1f. Okay. Um, pretty straightforward there. And one of the last things that we need to do is 
So when I... Um, so we're going to need to basically disable and enable the scroll whenever something is shown. So at the end of that, I guess we're going to go ahead and just disable it. Um, okay, here we go. So we're just going to come down to here and we're going to say scroll area dot enabled is equal to false. And then when I submit text, I can probably set it to be enabled, but I probably don't need to know that. Um, let me think, let me think, let me think. So there should be an open from interaction, I believe. Yes, here we go. So when we call open, we're going to go ahead and do all this fun stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and say scroll area dot enabled is equal to true. Um, and I'm also going to, when I come down to here, I really don't want to do it in open. Uh, that's too, well, no. Yeah. So we'll do that. And then also in submit, I'm just going to go ahead and say, And we're just going to say if scroll area dot enabled. So we'll say if not scroll area dot enabled. Hello, cool. Welcome back. How are you doing today? So with that, I think we'll be good. And then probably what we'll do is um, I'm just going to go ahead and come down to here. Here, and uh, no, hold on. Um, on close, I think is where we're gonna do it. So we're just gonna go ahead and say this is equal to false, and that should do it essentially. Um, so we'll let that compile and see what happens. Uh, that probably does mean that I need to turn my scroll area off by default see how that handles it. Pretty good, chilling, get myself mentally prepared for tomorrow. Ooh, it sounds ominous. What's tomorrow? So, I think that sets everything up. So let's go ahead and hit play. <laughs> So we do still have to handle um, our input coming in from off screen. Currently it just pops in, which is not terrible, but it's fine. Large door. Huh? Is that half a sec? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. It didn't reset that, did it? I bet you're still, yeah. Hold on, before we start playing, uh, let's go ahead and make this 0.25. That's kind of what I think was a good pace. Let's try that again. Ugh. Man. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Let's go ahead and maximize on play. Looking good. Uh, you'll notice that we can scroll if we so choose to. Um, I don't know how I feel about that fan of that, but I, I don't like that you can scroll past where there's text. I'm torn. Um, our supervisor told us we have to upload our group's project alpha build to a site called itch.io for actual feedback. Ah, yeah, that's actually not an uncommon thing anymore. Um, a, lot of, a lot of classes uh, that are doing game development are kind of saying that at the end of the semester, you're going to upload your project and kind of get feedback. It's actually a pretty good idea, I think. It's a really good way to get your, kind of dip your toes into publishing and also just getting criticism um, or feedback in general. Um, all right, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say hit. We get that. That's all good. Again, we can scroll if we choose to. 
Um, and I'm also going to. Yeah, it's fine. So let's go ahead and try clearing. Or whatever that was, because I totally had my hands on the wrong. Nice. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and say hit a couple of times, because that's the giant one. Okay. Nice. I do like that. So clearing gets rid of all of that, um, and it does it in a pretty, pretty smooth scrolling motion, which is nice. Um, what else should I do while we're in here? Um, well, I suppose the easiest thing to do would just be to get the sliding in from off screen happening, and then I think we'll be done with this. I'm pretty satisfied with that clearing. Um, let's give it something like super gigantic to clear. It is my. Oh no, okay. That's just the geometry of the building. I'm like, is my menu skewed? That would be super weird, but it's not. Okay, so let's go ahead and say clear. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm a little concerned that that might cause some epileptic seizures, but um, let's just make it as big as I can. Okay, so that's pretty gigantic. Um, I'm assuming that's, I don't know, probably at least two dozen. Um, so let's try clearing that. Ooh, <laughs> ugh. Not super great, but that's because they were all the same. Um, so if I do like hit, test, um, examine, hit, punch, uh, t -t 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 -t. Uh, let's do test. We'll do Batman. Oh, I don't. Oh, wait. That's not right. That's an homage. That should work. Interesting. Let's see if this works. Okay, so... Oh, I, oh, I took Batman out. That's right. <laughs> it seemed to be a bit too random. So, let's go ahead and... Uh, let's try clearing... Actually, I'm not going to clear right now. I want to, like, scroll to about here. Let's try that. Okay. I just wanted to see what it looked like when we tried clearing from uh, halfway up. Let's see. Yeah, it's weird. I keep thinking, I wish they could see the inner works of the game to appreciate the way we've coded it more so than the actual game itself. Is that weird? Well, <laughs> that's not weird, but you can't... Uh, so, so the approach that I that I try to sort of tell people to take when they're showing their game off is you, you are not going to be there over the shoulder of every single person who's playing your game to explain any flaws that you know. So you have to be able to, to send your game out and it should be able to be played and enjoyed by anyone without any input from you ever. Because more likely than not, they'll never actually meet you. And certainly, it's highly unlikely that you're actually going to be there to explain things to them. So you just kind of have to let let your you know let your baby go and uh, be confident enough that it can stand on its own two legs. Um, because you 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 can't explain the game. Um, and if you have to explain the game, then you haven't made a good game. So. Uh, that's that's the approach that I that I try to kind of teach people to to take whenever they're doing this sort of um, this method of getting feedback. So uh, it's it's just a it's just a general approach that I recommend because it also if if you're too overprotective of it and you feel the need to explain it all the time, then it's going to be really hard for you to hear good like critical feedback. Not necessarily like. You know, feedback in general can be a anything ranging from, you know, actually really good feedback that's instructive and constructive um, to bad feedback that's just, I hate this, and, you know, that's obviously not, not very helpful normally, but, you know, it's, it is still feedback technically. Um, and it's just important not to get too upset with feedback. You need to just kind of jot down what people say, make a mental note of it. You don't have to act on it, um, but you should, you should at least hear it and uh, maybe examine it. But you don't have to actually take it into account. You don't have to do anything because someone said that I hate this part. Um, you should instead look at it and say, like, okay, why did people 
update this part? Is there something I can change that makes it much more interesting? Um, that's that's just a kind of a way I would suggest looking at it. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and stop playing. Uh, we now need to set up some transforms for this. So let's go ahead and go back to Splash Fade. Ah! my water bottle over. Okay. What game are you putting up, if you don't mind me asking? Or I guess, like, what is the game itself? Because obviously it's your own project, but... <laughs> um. Alright, so we're going to turn this on. Uh, we probably don't need this on, but it's fine for now. Actually, we turn on our root just to be sure let's go ahead and revert um, I'm gonna turn this <gasps> it's on uh, I am I'm gonna get rid of this because we don't need it anymore I am gonna keep the old output for posterity not posterity's sake um, so that I can make some screenshots and screen recordings to uh, show the difference because I always forget to do that uh, so I'm gonna just keep the old one and then swap between them because it should be pretty easy for me to do so um, we are going to go ahead and uh, let's go to not the right address for that, I guess. Uh, we're gonna go down here to our viewport. No, um, we're gonna move this up to here. Um, input is the thing. Oh crud! All of it has to scroll in from off screen, which sucks. Cool. Okay. Uh, mm. So that means that I essentially want to move this which is gross and not fun. So I basically have to scroll the, the entire, oh, this is gonna suck so hard. Um, I basically have to like scroll the entirety of the uh, menu, like there, exactly there. <laughs> um, oof, okay, um, I can I can work with that. Uh, so the reason that I have to scroll the entire menu is because the input is separate from the output, and the output is what has that gradient. So, well, let's do that, I guess. Um, so we're going to go ahead and... That means that I don't really have to do much. Um, but I will go ahead and turn this off and hit apply, just so that I have all of that. Um, let's go ahead and look at our input view. And I'm just going to have two vector twos, I guess. Uh, one that's the hidden position and one that's the uh, like visible position. So uh, let's see here. Clear scroll duration. I'm going to come down to here. I'm going to go ahead and say tooltip. Um, we're going to say public vector 2 uh, hidden position is equal to new vector 2. And I believe that is... Uh, it's going to be 0, negative 200, F, I want to say. It might actually end up being negative 400, just because of how size deltas works, but we'll see. Um, the position of the uh, rect transform, oh, here, hold on, of the root when input is hidden. Let's go ahead and copy this that this is visible position and the input is visible okay and that's just going to be at zero zero okay uh, so we're going to have another coroutine that is just going to be right here we're just going to go ahead and call this um, private enumerator What do I want to call this? Um, I don't want to call it show or hide, so I guess I'll call it move root coroutine. And we're going to take two vector twos. It's going to be start position, and then another vector two that's a end position. Okay. It's a gungeon meet. Time mechanic base game. Each level will have a different mechanic that affects time in some way. 
Oh, that's interesting. So what, can you give me an example of a time-based mechanic? Is it just like a timer counting down, or is it um, like actually the player manipulating the flow of time somehow? Uh, all right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to say, um, I guess we'll also give it a float duration. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say float t is equal to 0f, while t is less than 1f. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say t plus equals time dot delta time. Uh, divided by duration, then we're going to go ahead and say yield return null, and we're going to say root, actually that's not going to work very well. Um, so I don't want to constantly get component on this, so I'm actually going to go ahead and make a protected, I want to put it under the lists, so I'm going to come down here and say protected, uh, rec transform, and we're going to say uh, root transform, I guess. Don't think I'm really using that anywhere else. So we're going to come back to here. We're going to say root transform dot. Uh, da, 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 da. I think it's, it's not size delta, it's anchored position is what I want. It's going to be equal to a vector 2 dot lerp from start pose to end pose based on t uh, and then at the very bottom once that's done we're just going to go ahead and say root transform dot anchored position is equal to end pose okay good and that's pretty much all we have to do there um i am going to i guess real quick uh when this coroutine starts i'm just going to go ahead and say it if root transform is equal to null root transform is equal to root dot get component uh, rec transform. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let's go ahead and when we call open now, uh, well, when we call, okay, hold on, before I do that, I need to add two more things here. Um, so I want to add a public float um, show duration is equal to, I'm going to say 0.5 and a public float hide duration is equal to also 0.5. We might make this 0.25. Um, Tooltip. Let's see. Player changing time. One level currently has time based off its movement. Slower you are, the slower time flows and a reverse time one two. Oh, that'll be cool. Kind of like a super hot approach. Ah. My headphone is turned around. Okay, there we go. Um, so we're going to want to say for the high duration, uh, time for the input to be hidden. Uh, let's go ahead and say for the show duration, we'll just say tooltip, time for the, or twime, time for the input to be shown. Opening the menu, and I'm going to go ahead and come down here and say when closing the menu. Okay, so with that, we have a couple of other things that I need to do. Um, one is the on close. I can't call base dot close. Um, that has to happen at the end, which is a bit. Much. Let me think. Um, oh, geez, that is a bit much, now, isn't it? Um, so, blah, 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 blah. we've got some problems. Um, right, right. Yeah, so clear scroll duration needs to be faster than hide duration, um, just as a general rule. But also, we're going to go ahead and go up to close. So I'm going to get rid of this. And that means I have to do a couple of things. So one, I need to say start coroutine, um, move root coroutine. And we're going to give it um, 
visible position, hidden position, hide duration. And I'm going to go ahead and pass in true. And all I'm going to do there is I'm going to go to definition. I'm going to pass in a bool close after is equal to false. And then at the very end here, I'm just going to say if close after base dot close. Oh, that sucks that I have to call base dot close. But um, all right, so that's that. Let's go ahead and come back up to here. I am going to copy this, and we're going to put this in open. And also, this needs to be show duration. Uh, OK. So in theory, um, the input view should like move in from off screen and then move off to off screen. Um, we'll see. But yeah, that's pretty cool for, your, for the first level. Um, what other types of time-based mechanics are you thinking? Um, Besides uh, time based on player movement, if you've if you've gotten to that stage for planning, I assumed that you have, but uh, it's never good to assume, as they say. Also, I'm going to take a drink. Ah. All right, uh, so we're looking at point. Five for that. High duration is 0.5 as well. That should be fine. Um, hidden position of negative 200. I think we're good there. So I am going to go ahead and debug this. I'm going to see if I can get this to look right. Negative 200. I'm going to be surprised if that... Huh? Cool. Yeah, that's, that's good then. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit apply there. And I think we're good. Pretty sure anyway. So let's go ahead and test this out. Okay. So with this setup, I should basically have, uh, when you start interacting with something, the input will slide in from the bottom of the screen instead of just popping into existence. Um, the text input or output area will now have a gradient at the top so that it doesn't obscure your vision until you filled out the entire screen with text, at which point you can, if you choose to scroll, uh, you can, if you choose to do so, scroll all the way up to the top to, again, get a clear look at whatever you're looking at. Um, or you can just type clear, at which point it will properly clear out. Um, let's go ahead and hit continue. All right, so. Nice. I should probably apply Easing of some kind to this. Also, these are actually way shorter than I would like, or way longer than I would like. I, I might straight up shorten, um, I'm going to turn off maximize on play so I can kind of look at it this freehand. Let's go to view container, input. So we're going to make the show duration like point. That's problematic. Ooh. What happens if I mash enter? Well, nothing really. Which is probably for the best. Oh, that makes sense? Question mark? I don't know. I'm going to have to keep my eye on that. I'm a little concerned. Okay, I'll mess around with that a little bit more. Sorry, I'm kind of just messing around to see what the lerping is doing. Uh, so let's see, if we go ahead and type, like, um, this is getting dark. Um, uh, let's go ahead and type, so I'm going to close now. Not bad. 
Um, so this is so this is problematic. Um, if I am closing, I can't hit enter again to interact with something. I'm actually curious to know if I can. Yeah, so there's a like a there's like a delay. And that is not tenable. So um, I need to be able to like close and then instantly start interacting again, which is awkward. But that might be something that I that I have to play with to kind of get a good feeling for it. But we do have much more juicy menus now. Um, I really, I feel like it's snapping. Maybe it's just because those two come in at different times, which is a little awkward. Um, okay, so blah, 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 blah. so now our input view no longer just pops into existence and covers the entire screen. Uh, instead, it now uh, moves in from the bottom of the screen to position itself and then will uh, slowly grow as you type in more text. So I think that's pretty much what the end desire was, like the end goal was for this. Um, there are some issues where I do need to get the toggling to work a little bit better. Um, it kind of sucks because I, I can't think of a good way to... Um, when it happened instantly, I could kind of just clear everything in one frame, and then if you hit enter again, it was fine. Um, but with this, because I have it animating down, it means that I have to basically, if you reopen it, I have to force it to jump to the bottom and then come back up, which I don't like doing. Um, but I, I can't really think of a better way to do that. So... Um, okay. Uh, let's go ahead and stop this real quick. I'm going to go to my close function. And what we do here is we just call clear. But it might be good. Uh, let's go ahead and say find all references here. That sucks. Okay. Um, We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna go to definition. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this in, make this float duration. We're gonna make this duration. Okay, that'll cause problems up here, which is fine, because we're just gonna pass this in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Paste this, this is gonna be a float duration. Uh, this is gonna pass that in. And then what I'm going to do here is when we call close on move, well, no, when we do it here, uh, we're going to do close, uh, sorry, hide duration divided by 2f. Basically make it half of whatever that duration is. That's probably the best way to go. Um, I also think that we're going to change this. Um, so we're going to move this. We're going to get rid of the start position stuff. And instead, we're just going to make this equal to um, whatever our current position is. So we're going to go up to here, and we're just going to say vector2 start position is equal to root transform dot anchored position. Um, this does get more complicated because now I have to keep track of this move coroutine, which is awkward. Um, so we're going to go ahead and find all references. There should only be the two um, in open and in close. And what I'm going to need to do is up here, I am going to have to... I guess I'll make it protected. I don't really want to, but it should probably be so just in case. So we're going to say protected um, coroutine... Uh, We'll call this move coroutine. Okay, uh, we're actually going to position this down here where it's a middle thing because it's not really a variable that gets cached, it's just one that gets set occasionally. Um, so, all we're going to do here is when we call open before we call start coroutine, 
uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say if the coroutine is equal to, or not equal to null, not equal to null, then we're going to say um, stop coroutine, move coroutine, okay, and then we're going to say move coroutine is equal to that. Uh, pretty much we're just going to do the same thing and close. We're going to come down to here, paste that right there. Okay. I think that will let us um, properly. Hold on, make sure that that's all working. <sighs> that complicates things so much. Oh, that really sucks. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. Hold on. Um, I don't like doing this, but we might have to. Okay. Um, so, I think I'm going to have to override. So, by default, uh, is open is oh sorry um, by default is open is just basically checking to see if the root is active um, <coughs> excuse me and if it is then it, it assumes the menu is open and if it's not then it assumes the menu is closed with this I have to override that otherwise my interactions won't work so I have to say instead um, I'm gonna have to actually keep track of this which sucks um, so I'm going to come back up to here and we're gonna say uh, protected bool is open <coughs> is equal to false. I need a drink, apparently. Got a cough in my throat. Ah. All right, uh, and what we're going to do here is we're just going to say uh, for is open. We're just going to return lowercase is open. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and here and then in the open function, which should just call the yeah, standard open. Uh, right here, what we're going to do is we're going to say is open is equal to true, and then on close, we're going to say is open is equal to false. Okay, so let's go ahead and let that compile. So in theory, what this should let me do is um, I should be able to now toggle freely between closing and opening. So even if it's in the even if it's doing the animation for closing, it should still um, like let me actually clear everything out. We do have a problem with clearing though, in the sense that it probably won't behave the way I want. Um, so we'll just give this a shot real quick, and then assuming that this works, um, we'll probably end it there today. Just because. Uh, but we have made very good progress. I do like the way the menu works now. Like It feels a lot more juicy to me. It just feels better. Um, and hopefully I can get the responsiveness back up to where it was when it was, you know, frame by frame. <laughs> Uh, so let's let's see what ends up happening here. Okay. What? 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 Oh, cool. So that's all broken now. <laughs> uh, huh. That is curious. That is uh, no doubt curious. So, can't pull up the input menu anymore. That is fun. Why not? It's the question that I have. Hmm. 
This is most curious. So by default, it should be false. On open, we should try to set it to true. How curious. Huh. Um... Oh, actually, hold on. Hold on. Let's go to our base. Okay. I'm pretty sure that it's that I didn't do something stupid there, but I could be wrong. Okay, good. I was just making sure that I wasn't setting is open. Um, well, crap. That's not good. Is it at least requesting it? It is. But it doesn't want to turn it on. It's curious. So, ooh, excuse me. I'm going to call base.open. Call base.open. Menu.setActive. True. So we should be setting it. Oh, that's why. Let's grab this. It has to go at the bottom. And I should probably. Oh, jeez. Hold on. Time out. Time out. Time out. Oh, that sucks. Definition. Definition. Oh, man. Frack! Of course, of course not. Ah, oh, that sucks. So, I can't set is open to be false here because... <sighs> Dang it. Okay. So if I set is open to be false on close, then it won't... It won't be able to um, to close properly because all of the subsequent close calls for the base closes will be like, oh, it's already closed, I guess. And that is not acceptable. So, freaking of course not. Um, great, my own, my own UI system has boxed me in. Um, I do not want to take the safety checks out because those are quite useful occasionally. I have... This is not cool. Uh, that complicates things to such a degree that it is almost untenable, actually. Um, that really does cause problems. Um, the only thing I can think is that I actually have to open it again. Like, I have to close it, then reopen it. Oh my goodness, that is not... No, that's not okay. So let's peek this. Um, let's let's go ahead and just real quick get a sense of what is happening. Base start close. Yep, we got all of this stuff. Um, and I need all of that to fire still. Uh, oh my god. That just complicates things so much. I guess I could add a Boolean parameter to close that's like force close. And I really don't want to, but I could. And I would have to do the same thing to open, which would... Uh, nope, that, com that complicates things too much. Um... Crap. I really don't want to have to pull all of that functionality in. Ugh. But I totally will have to, won't I? Ah, that's so gross. All right. Fine. So we're going to go ahead and peek this. Um, I'm just going to grab all of this. 
well here actually so we're gonna grab all of this fun stuff that was not what i wanted to do whatever um so we're gonna go ahead and come down here we're gonna say protected no i'm sorry it's not going to go there um i want to go here um so probably down here somewhere let's go ahead and find this here we are protected void <sighs> close wrapper i hate having duplicate code like this um, we're gonna peek this we're gonna peek this and all we're gonna do is just copy and close this Ugh. Oh no. Well, that should be protected then. Oh, but look at that. That's hilarious. Which does not really mean I need this. Come on. Let's do this. Find all references. So we can just kind of get rid of that. I think we'll copy you as well. Uh, okay, so that's that. Let's go ahead and go back to here. Um, let's go ahead and go back to here. It sucks that I have to do this, but I guess I do. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say, I'm going to add some comments here. Uh, protected calls. Based on close be used because uh, input use means enter. Okay, uh, so that means that I can instead do. So this gets commented out, and that goes there. So, uh, so we're gonna go all the way back up to close. Uh, instead of calling base dot close here, we're gonna call close wrapper. And then if we go to move root, go to definition, and then if we do close after, we're just gonna do that. I hate that that is how I have to handle this, but it is. It's such a sloppy way to do it. Uh, I really wish there was a better way to get at bits and pieces of code like that, but then again, it's kind of my own fault because I have all of them wrapped in safety checks, which sucks. Um, and because it's an asynchronous thing, it means that I just can't do that. But because multiple things are expecting you to instantly have the menu close, it complicates things way more than it should. <sighs> well, not way more than it should. Probably just the right amount. All right. So I'm going to take another drink while that's compiling. Always great to see collab fail. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to jump into the castle scene again because that's faster. And let's maximize on play too. So this should work in theory. Let's see. All right. So hitting enter. Cool. Okay, so now you can see that I can like toggle between these and it's all fine. It's all gravy. Um, let's go ahead and try and interact with something. Hello. Why are you not? Hold on. 
I'm going to turn off Maximize on Play. I don't think this is shrinking. It's totally not. Yeah, it's not. So that's not cool. Um, the question there is why not? Let's see. Because of this. Because of this. Stop that. Um, okay. That really sucks. God. Oh my goodness. That is devastating, actually, because it means that I need to... All right, so we're going to come up to here. Man, this is ridiculous. Uh, we're going to go ahead and say move coroutine, go to definition. Uh, we're going to grab this. This is going to be call full close afterwards. It's going to do that. And we're also going to go ahead and say stop all coroutine. So I need to call stop all coroutines because if I do not, um, there is a coroutine that every menu does when it's opened. Um, that's a text input menu, and it's just listening for um, enter to be pressed so that it can send text. Uh, and if I don't have that, uh, that coroutine start, then it, the menu will not function, essentially, or rather it will not function as you would expect. Um, now, now that I think about it, I might actually be able to get around that a little bit. Um, and that coroutine is, I'm going to go ahead and go up here because it's compiling anyway. Um, it's pretty much this coroutine. This, uh, no, not select. Oh, wait, no. Aha, we have that in update now. Um, I was going to say, I probably could actually move it into update. And there we go. Uh, so I probably don't need to call stop all coroutines. I probably could just use that as a safety feature, but we'll we'll do that anyway. Okay. So try this one more time. Um, so now it shouldn't um, like uh, incorrectly clear anymore. It should actually do that properly. Um, okay. That did not do what I wanted, which is really annoying. Okay. It should have auto-selected it. That's weird. I could also probably give this some inertia to make it more fun. So I'm going to, real quick, grab my input view. I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to give this some inertia. Deceleration rate of, that's probably fine. Um, let's go ahead and save that and load that in again. Um, so that inertia that I just added, all that's really going to do is um, just, if you choose to click and drag the output area instead of using the scroll wheel, um, it will retain some amount of velocity. Uh, so you can kind of just like throw it if you want to. Uh, it's just a more fun way of having that scroll happen. Um. So you can see like that. Oh, that's hilarious. Velocity is not canceled when you start scrolling, which is probably something that I want to do. So, because it keeps the velocity, which is hilarious. If I let that go for long enough, I bet it'll slow down. But until then, like if I do a fresh throw, it's hilariously going to keep doing that, which is very funny. 
Um, but now you can do stuff like that, which is pretty fun. Like that's a thing. Although it does kind of just look like it's popping, which is not great. That might be screen tearing, um, actually. Uh, so, so cool. We do have that. Um, and then if we go ahead and close, curious enough, it does seem like our input is not selected. Um, so that needs to change, I guess. I'm not entirely sure why that is not happening. Um, so let's go ahead and come to here real quick and say select. Hmm. Huh. doesn't seem to want to do that, which is curious. So. I don't know. Oh, that's why. Um, shoot! Oh, come on! It's the same reason. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <sighs> Freaking, of course not. Um means that I have to come down here and say select input. No, actually, I can't even do it there. I have to do a separate start coroutine. Select delay. So that's two coroutines. The two of the same coroutines started regardless which... Freaking course. That should fix my issue, though. So I'm going to have to optimize that a little bit. Um... But we do have a much more interactive menu now, which is nice. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and test it real quick, and then that'll probably be it for the day. Um, so I guess while I'm doing that, announcements. Uh, I should be back for next Tuesday. Um, the I should be good for, I think, the next a half basically the next two weeks um the f weekend of the first of, uh, of february 1st which is two weeks from now um i am having a friend over so i'm probably not going to be streaming that saturday uh, or that weekend um but that's two weekends away so it's not much of an issue yeah so now you can see that we have all of this stuff showing up Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. That's not great. Cool. So I need to do it to do here. Um So that's a pretty good place to stop for the night, or day. It's transitioning. It's weird. Um, okay, so again, should be good for our normal Tuesday stream at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I think I will see everyone then. So as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.